Gerald Bodnar speaking from Cape Town. We're busy with this series, uh, Lessons from the Geese. And I hope, like myself, you've learned a lot of lessons from the geese already. But I'm excited. Uh, in the last few days, uh, we've seen miracles. Miracles after a difficult time in South Africa, where there's been looting and unrest up in the north in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, and uh, people got hurt. But then, there was a change in the atmosphere. God started to answer prayers and people started to work together to protect their place and to start to clean up. But I've heard a great miracle coming from Tugela Ferry. Alzette Malerba, one of our missionaries in Tugela Ferry, tells me uh, that they've had a problem in Tugela Ferry with their hospital it was out of uh, electricity. And because of the unrest, ESCOM couldn't come to help them, but it was a great crisis in the hospital. And then LZ got online uh, with Herman Petorius and his cell group and they prayed. And LZ said, miraculously, the power just went back on. And she's absolutely assured, together with some of the doctors in the hospital, that this was answer to prayer. Friends, prayer is powerful. God changes things when we pray. I hope you enjoy this meeting. Let's worship with Valdi. Come let us worship our King let us bow at His feet He has done great things See what our Savior has done See how His love overcomes He has done great things He has done great things the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Yes and amen, you will do great things, God you do great things. Oh hero of heaven, you've conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things, we dance in your freedom, awake and our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you've conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, 
you have done great things We dance in your freedom, awaken life Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted I Oh God, you have done great things we can be together though not physically together we are together in spirit I think of all the people listening on their own some of them with family with friends uh, in small groups and I pray that you bless us as we listen I pray Lord that you will teach us and Lord that the lessons that we learn will change us thank you Father God that Change is still possible in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we are not set in our ways. We can be miraculously moved by you and by your Spirit. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for coming to give us hope, for coming to give us life, for coming to give us eternal life. Lord, so that we can live godly lives as followers of Jesus. We honor you and we love you. Please speak to us. Amen. We're coming to the fourth lesson that I've learned from the geese. And that's interesting. I, I, I wish <laughs> I uh, could spend more day, time in Canada and the USA so that I could really see these Canadian geese for myself and see how they act and how they fly in their formations and how they help each other by uh, flapping their wings and and how a, a leader can get tired and move to the back and yeah, we've learned so much up to now but there's one thing that people that know the geese say is they're always honking did you know that there was a very good reason that geese are honking especially when they fly information. They say that the honking always comes from the back. Why? Because the birds at the back are encouraging the leader in front to go on and fly and do a good job. They honk as a way of encouraging each other. Isn't it beautiful? I want to speak to you about this kind of encouragement. You know, being a lead goose <laughs> and leading a flock uh, is not easy. Whether you're the father in the family uh, or the mother, whether you're leading uh, in a business, uh, in a company, whether you're a political leader, even leading as a pastor, it's not easy. Uh, it can be very difficult, especially in difficult times, uh, especially when you're leaving a situation where you're experiencing scatteredness, like a scattered church. Uh, it can require huge amounts of efforts. Yeah, to break the trail for others, to be the lead bird, you know, is to be a target. I want to say it again. To be the lead bird, to be the leader, to break the trail for others, is to become a target. And that can be so stressful. And that can be so wearying. Because the lead bird <laughs> doesn't always know what's going on behind his back. He's leading the formation, but uh, he doesn't know what's happening with the membership with the people, with the family, with the business, uh, with, the, uh, with the members. He doesn't know, he doesn't always know how they feel. Uh, he doesn't uh, always know what all the questions they have. Uh, he doesn't always know what the misconceptions are that they have. <laughs> Many times the only thing the lead bird will hear is the grumbling 
of the vocal few. Sure. But you know what? Through prayer and through kind words, we can give strength to the ones who lead, to the one ahead of us. It's so amazing. Because many times the only thing the leader will hear uh, is uh, the, the many tales of woe. Many times they only hear complaints. Many times they only hear uh, the arguments. But you have no idea. Maybe as a leader you do know what a kind word, what a thank you will mean, what a gesture of support means to a leader. It sometimes makes everything worthwhile. You know as a parent what it means when a child will just say, Dad, thanks for being who you are. Thanks for loving me. Thanks for leading the, the family. You will know what it means to be a mother and just to hear, I love you more. Thank you what you're doing for us. You have no idea what it means when someone just give you a telephone call or an email and just say thank you. Just give a little bit of appreciation. It makes it worthwhile. It makes you want to go on. Yeah, we also see that uh, in the very well-known biblical uh, uh, verses in, in Exodus 17, you know, from verse 8 to verse 13. I'm not going to read it to you. You know the story so well, but you can go and read it in Exodus 17, where, where uh, the Israelites are fighting the people of Amalek. And Joshua is the general. He's going to do the fighting. And then Moses say to him, we're going to go up the hill. And, um, uh, and, and, and her go with, with him and Aaron go with, with him. And Moses say, as long God told me that as long as my staff is above my head, you will be winning. And then it happens just like that. They fight Amalek. It's a, it's a terrible war. But as long as Moses' staff is above his head, they are winning. But he gets tired. And as he gets tired and the staff comes down, Amalek comes in and they start to win. And then Aaron and Hur comes and they, they help Moses. They keep his arms up. And in keeping his arms up, the Israelites win the battle. I want you to, to sink in, to understand how important it is to give encouragement to your leaders. But you also need it. We all need it. <laughs> you, you, you've, you've felt what it means when you're sick and, and someone will just encourage you. You know, when, when, you, when you, you don't have a, a good day and, and you just get a telephone call and someone says, I'm thinking of you. You're not alone. You know, uh, my son Lucas is helping me with this uh, uh, video, but, but he often told me up in Kenya or Tanzania, it can get very lonely. And then sometimes just a telephone call or an email or a WhatsApp from someone in the church saying, Lucas, God told me to pray for you, will make you want to go on. It's so true. It's so true. We. We need to keep on honking <laughs> for the brethren. It's so important. In Romans 12 verse 15, it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So let's encourage each other. In Hebrews 10 verse uh, 24 says, Let us outdo each other in being helpful and kind to each other and in doing good. I want to repeat this. I think this is the text of the day. Hebrews 10 verse 24. Let us outdo each other in being helpful and kind to each other and in doing good. Wow. Okay. So let's honk for each other. Let's encourage each other. I'm going to finish with the fifth lesson. And in the fifth lesson, they say, I told you last week that sometimes a goose can get out of the formation and can even die if it doesn't get back. But they say that a goose can get sick or wounded because hunters uh, uh, hunt these geese. So when a goose gets sick or when uh, it's wounded and it falls out of the formation, two of the other geese will also go out of the formation. 
and will follow this goose and they will stay with it. They will stay with it until it is healed and able to fly again or until it is dead. And then they will, they will go back and they will, uh, they will fly on their own or with another flock uh, or catch up with their own flock. But that's the way they do it. They never leave their wounded behind. I have a friend who was a, a commander in the South African war. And he always said to me, Gerard, you know, the strangest thing in a good uh, military uh, setup, you never leave the wounded behind. He said, in my experience, it's only in the church that the wounded are many times left behind. Well, that's not good news. We mustn't do that. We must be like the geese. We must do the same. You know what? Our Lord Jesus set the example for us. He came down to earth. He became a man. He, he let go of his godliness to become human, to come and help us so that we can a redo so that we can come into a new relationship with God so that our spirits can come alive with God so that sin, the power of sin can be broken. That's what Jesus did for us. You can go and read so many Philippians 2 but also Hebrews 2 verse 10 to 13, 17 and 18. Go and read that. How Jesus, but the whole New Testament is full of it. How Jesus came to us to set us free, to help us. I want to read to you a word from uh, James 5. I'm reading it in the Living Bible, uh, verse 19 and, and 20. Dear brothers, if anyone has slipped away from God and no longer trusts the Lord, and someone helps him understand the truth again, that person who brings him back to God will have saved a wandering soul from death, bringing about the forgiveness of his many sins. Yes, many things can happen that a Christian can be wounded, or that a Christian can become sick, that a follower of Jesus can come to a place where he even <sighs> comes to a place where they lose their faith or where they don't want to be belong to the group anymore. And if they fall and if they get wounded, by the enemy, by Satan. We mustn't leave them behind. We must go and catch up with them. And we must help them until we can get, they can get back and catch up with the flock. We must do that. We must never leave a sick or wounded brother or sister alone. As long as there is hope. As long as there is hope. There comes a time, the Bible says, when someone turns his back completely on God. And where our only hope will be to walk away so that that person can really see the seriousness of his deed. But before that, as long as there is hope, we must help. I've read this amazing story in the news this week about a, a professor from Stellenbosch. <laughs> and uh, a Professor Meiren, Eben Meiren. And... Uh, he has been retired in, in a, a retirement village in Ona in Brits up north. And he died this week. Then his son Jacques is telling a testimony about his dad. He said, my father was an atheist all his life until he went to that old age home. He said, and there... A miracle happened. He said he changed from an atheist to a God follower. A God follower. He said he went through a whole transformation. His whole life was transformed. He said he became the most fantastic person. He said and in the last few years he even became a preacher among the people in the old age home. I would love to hear the rest of the story. I'm sure 
It wasn't Ibn mailing on his own, the atheist in the old age home, and nothing happened. I'm sure there were people with him. I'm sure they were followers of Jesus who made an impression. I'm sure they were followers of Jesus who loved him enough, who cared enough, who stayed with him. And then the miracle happened. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? We must never give up hope. We must know that what God has begun, He will finish. He promises it. So many times we think people can't change, but it's not true. Even as the geese will go with a wounded or the sick goose, and two of them will follow Him and help Him, not leave Him alone, until He's either healed or dead, and then they get back. This is the way for us to do. Wasn't this an amazing analogy? Uh, the flock of geese <laughs> and my prayer for us is that we will be like a flock of geese my prayer for us as a church as a family as friends as followers of jesus as uh, missionaries and, and workers and disciple makers within all nations my dream for us is that we will fly in perfect formation my dream for us is that we will cooperate as a team. My dream is that we will be united behind godly leadership. My dream is that we will be constantly encouraging those around us. And my dream is that we will help our brothers and sisters in the faith. If we practice these things, <laughs> then uh, then we will reach the flock's destination. <laughs> you know what our flock's destination is? The kingdom of God. If we live like this, we will see the kingdom of God at hand and we will see the kingdom come. May God bless you. in my sorrow when dead in my sin I'm lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested my life began Oh your grace so washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you released from my chains i'm a prisoner no more my shame was a ransom you faithfully bore Cancel my debt and he called me his friend When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes all
Baie dankie dat jy vandag so met ons gekeier het. Indien jy by ons gemeente wil inskakel, kan jy na hierdie link toe gaan. Baie dankie vir julle financiële bijdrage, ons waardeer dit opraag. Indien jy graag een bijdrage sal wil maak, hier is ons bankbesonderhede. Julle kan ook met Snapscan een bijdrage maak. Logos het ook een COVID-19 noodfonds gestig, indien jy graag een bijdrage tot hierdie fonds wil maak, hier is die bankbesonderhede. Ons het ook gedurende hierdie tijd een voedselbank begin en indien jy graag een bijdrage tot dit wil maak, hier is die bank besonderhede. Meer ons baie dankie dat jy vandag saam met ons gekuur het, ons sien jy weer volgende week.